Hey everyone, Trevor at Top Loaded Gaming. It's been a little while since I made a video, but I thought that I would come back and share what uh, I've been doing this whole time and a lot of the pickups that I've uh, acquired since the last time I made a video. So one difference now is I was collecting a lot of the Jax Pacific Nintendo figures, World of Nintendo figures, the 2 or 2.5 inch uh, little figures. I've kind of gone through a lot of that and uh, decided I was only going to keep certain ones, uh, mostly the 8-bit ones, and uh, I'm getting rid of the rest. And as far as toys... I kind of started collecting uh, a little bit of the stuff from my childhood because the the way it, I'm kind of taking it in my mind first of all I am refocusing a lot of my attention back to the original Nintendo I kind of became friends with uh, with Jesse at, at Bithead 1000 and it's kind of uh, lit a fire under my ass to really start concentrating on the Nintendo but not only that uh, since I started collecting I was just keeping everything everything I would come across I would keep and um, let me turn this off so that doesn't happen again basically I was just keeping everything and as of as of this moment in time I am only trying to go for uh, a complete NES collection. As far as the Sega Genesis and the Game Boy and all stuff like that, I'm only going to concentrate on games that I intend to play. So, I've been selling off a lot of my collection as of late and also making a lot of trades as well. Uh, if you remember, if you've been following the channel, I had traded my Shintae cart recently so I've been I've been doing stuff like that I've been making trades and selling things off and uh, trying to concentrate on the NES and if I run into games that I really want for the Genesis or whatever I get them I kind of went through my collection and picked out like a lot of the stuff that I recently got and we're gonna go through that now if you're not into toys because as I said I've been what I've been concentrating on toys wise is getting stuff that I'm nostalgic for from my childhood so I'm gonna save the toys as the last part of the video in case no one's interested in that but I thought I'd, I'd share some of that too so first up we got I finally got a switch um, I wasn't intending to get one so early I was really trying to hold out for a Zelda edition or, you know, something like that. I, I really wish I could have gotten the um, the Mar Super Mario Odyssey version with the, uh, the red um, Joy-Cons, but they didn't have one. And um, the way I actually got this, because, you know, right now I'm pretty broke. To, to be honest, um, the my my profession is in the oil field uh, down here in Louisiana, and right now we're under this fucking crash. And uh, at the moment, to be completely honest, I'm laid off. So as far as outright spending money, I'm kind of shut down on that. Uh, obviously, I have to worry about other stuff right now so as, as far as collecting it's it's kind of shut down so this some of this stuff goes as far back as you know uh possibly eight months ago uh maybe even up to a year so um the way i got this switch was i still had like 15 consoles extra that I wasn't reselling, I wasn't doing anything with, they were just collecting dust here, and I said, screw it, I don't really feel like listing all of these, cleaning every one of them and listing them on eBay and paying eBay fees and all of this stuff, so I took them to GameStop and uh, I was able to get the Switch, 
Let's see what else I got. Switch was brand new. It wasn't used or anything. I got Super Mario Odyssey with it. They gave me this cool um, expansion pass case. I thought that was pretty cool that they gave me that. I got uh, Breath of the Wild. But, see, initially I had bought the first version. But they told me, well, take that one now. And in a couple days, this expanded edition was coming out. So I ended up bringing the first version back and got this one a couple days later. So, and I also got the uh, Axiom Verge box set, which, that's the thing about some of this stuff. Uh, I can't exactly remember everything that I've already shared on the channel, because it's been so long. So if there's something that, you know, I already went through in another video, I apologize. So moving on from the Switch, I ended up getting the new Metroid, uh, Samus Returns. Hey, another uh, Metroid remake. Huh. Um, I was lucky enough to get the keychain with it. Not that I'll do anything with this keychain, but put it on a shelf and let it sit there. But um, I got that one. I don't know if anybody else noticed or not. Okay. But, and to be honest, I never, I never checked because I know if I go and check, I'm going to want to get it so I haven't checked okay but obviously I'm not I'm not talking about if everyone knows if this is reversible or not I mean I think anybody who got who got this figured that out you know the the cases the artwork is reversible what I'm specifically talking about is uh, I think in Europe I think the PAL version uh, of this game got this really cool Game Boy uh, shaped case and it kind of pisses me off that we didn't get it here in the states what what what's up with that nintendo why is it that all the coolest artwork is in japan all the cooler stuff never comes to the states it, it's to me it's ridiculous as far as the game itself i kind of feel like it could have been better I don't know, to be honest with you, the first time, you know, I ever played other Metroid games, I, I couldn't put them down until I beat the damn things. Um, and this one, I kind of just stopped playing it. And I've yet to uh, pick it back up, so I don't, that's never happened to me with, with a Metroid game. Um, to me, I, I wish... And I know a lot of people say that they, they keep doing it for everything, but I wish they would have went with a more traditional 16-bit um, or, or, you know, some something like that. Something like Shovel Knight. I, I wish they would have went in a more, um, I guess, pixelated art style rather than this uh, 2.5D stuff. I worked out this trade, and I forget, I forget what I traded. But it was a lot of stuff, I, I want to say it was a lot of Super Nintendo games that I was never going to play, ever in a million years, just never going to play. So, I got Metroid Zero Mission, and it, it's complete in box, um, it's got all the inserts, it's even got the plastic cellophane in here. Um, and the thing with this one is, this was, this loose cart was one of the first purchases that I made. See, my very first purchase was Gradius 5 for the PlayStation 2. That's what started this whole thing. Without Gradius 5, there's no shelf behind me. There's no gaming channel or anything. Gradius 5 is what started this whole thing. But my second purchase was Zero Mission. You know, and I, I do have to say, without Shadow Complex... <laughs>
I would have probably never gave Metroid a chance. Without Shadow Complex available for the Xbox Live, uh, the Xbox um, Arcade, um, I would have never understood what the hell I was supposed to do with Metroid games. Because as a kid, I didn't get it, and I never returned to it. So, uh, which I'm so thankful because the, the Metroid games are so, so amazing. I mean, to me, th- this is my this is my favorite one. Now, I'm saying that now. I'm currently playing through Super Metroid for the first time. And, you know, the controls are a little bit different from, from this one. And I'm trying to get used to it. You know, I, obviously, I, I, I wish the controls were like this for Super Metroid. But um, I'm, I'm working on it. But uh, Zero Mission was the first Metroid game that I sort of played and understood. I played the first Metroid for the NES when I was a kid. I never got it. So, um, the these are all part of the same trade. So next up we have Castlevania, Harmony of Dissonance. You know, and again, Shadow Complex is what got me into Metroid, Castlevania, all these, uh, they call them Metroidvania style games. I would have never picked up any of these games if it wasn't for Shadow Complex. So, I think, in my opinion, Shadow Complex and um, some of these newer games some of these newer games that are coming out, uh, what, what's the other one that they did uh, for Xbox One? Uh, Ori and the Blind Forest. You know, I think that these type of games are exposing uh, a whole new generation of kids to these old games um, because some of, some of these kids and teenagers uh, are, are they message me sometimes and like if I would have never played Ori, I, I would have never you know, uh, even known about Symphony of the Night or uh, Metroid Zero Mission or Super Metroid or whatever. I would have never known about them. So I think it's really cool that uh, Metroidvanias are uh, still alive and well because the, there's a lot of them now. There's, there's a whole lot of them out there for people to try out. And this is, to me, a really, this is to me a really great one. <clears throat> Next up, we have Castlevania Aria of Sorrow. Same thing, I'm not going to repeat myself again. This is, uh, I love the Castlevania games. Uh, I think actually, um, the games with Soma, because th- this one's uh, with the character Soma Cruz, I think. Um, I think, I can't remember what the name of it for the Nintendo DS is, but the the game um, for the DS that featured Soma as the playable character was the first um, Metroidvania-style Castlevania game that I played. Um, Actually, I think Symphony Symphony of the Night ended up being the last one because I could never find it anywhere that I played. Um, But... It's like I, I got the DS game and I played the shit out of it and started researching. I had to research all of this stuff. Um, 
started researching which Castlevania games were not mission based, which which Castlevania games were like Symphony of the Night. Uh, found out and just started collecting, trying to get as many as I could. So, and I had only got loose carts. So when I saw all these box games that we, it was all, you know, not mission based games, but you know, Metroid Castlevania style games, I had to, I had to jump at it. Castlevania Circle of the Moon. This was this one and Rondo of Blood because I kind of I, I sort of count Rondo of Blood as being just at the cusp of Symphony of the Night because to me it, it was you know they had double jumping and uh, you have all these rooms to explore so um, to me Ron, Rondo of Blood is like the only one I have left to get. Um, and as of right now, I, I don't have a Turbo Duo set up, which I'm, I'm trying to get also. But uh, this, aside from Rondo of Blood, this was the last one I was trying to get. And I finally got it. It's complete in box. Um, and I played through it, and I like it. Uh, I don't like it as much as the uh, Soul system. Um, but... Uh, which, to be honest, my favorite, my, my absolute favorite is Symphony of the Night. Um, after playing it so many times, that's, that's my favorite. Even though it wasn't the first, because usually it's the first one that you play that's usually your favorite. I mean, the first Mega Man game I played was Part 2. That ended up being my favorite and still is, but Symphony of the Night. Uh, like I said, the, the whichever game, I, I can't remember which one it is. And I, I'll put my text down below, but... Um, Whatever game that was, that was the first one I played, um, Castlevania-wise. But once I played Symphony of the Night, it was it was over with. That that's my favorite one. And last, this was just kind of a throw-in in the trade. There's no cart inside, but otherwise, other than the cart, it's complete. It's got everything in here. Uh, so I just need to find the cart. 